Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Falcon 2024 here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and co-analyst, Dave Vellante. Vroom, vroom. Vroom, vroom, we were just talking a little Formula One. Yeah, you an F1 fan? I am a fan, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we're going to get into that with our next guest. We have Amanda Adams. She is the VP America's Alliance at CrowdStrike. Thanks so much for coming on, Amanda. Thanks for having us. And Nanesh Patel, he is Global Managing Director at Accenture Security. Thanks yes, so much for coming on. Appreciate yeah. being, being here. So why don't you start, before we get into the very important topic of uh, Toto. <laughs> <For everyone. laughs> um, we are going to talk about the partnership between CrowdStrike and Accenture. Yeah. Just talk a little bit about the insights into, into what makes you such great collaborators and the recent news you've announced this week. Let me start by first saying this has been a partnership, I think, in the making over the last three to four years. There's been a lot of work behind the scenes, but the last six months it's really accelerated based off of just customer demands of transforming their stock. What are they doing around next-gen SIM and how is Accenture leading the way with advisory services or managed services, but they're leading the way with CrowdStrike. Um, our teams have done an excellent job of working together to build Accenture-led services on the CrowdStrike platform. Mike Santonos always says that you know, CrowdStrike three, four years ago is really easy. You hit one button, we deployed within five seconds. While we're still easy to deploy, the evolution of the platform and the 28 modules that we have has led to the partnership opportunity that Accenture brings to our clients today. Um, we're focused on the customer at the center of all that we do, and really our joint teams share that mission, and it's really worked well recently. Would you agree? I totally agree. I think the fact that you made it so easy as a one-click push button, it, it's one of the motivators as far as the partnership. When, when we look at our customers and what they're looking for in terms of outcomes, they're, they're taking that forward. They're like, okay, how do I use this across multi-dimensional aspects in terms of their own transformations? Be it technology, be it migration to the cloud, and being able to work together, innovate, come up with ideas that actually will meet our clients' outcomes, mm -hmm. and driving that valuable uh, insights is really something that we're seeing a lot of benefits from with our customers. I'm sorry, when did the partnership start? Technically, <laughs> our, our contract was signed in 2016, but really the last year when we think about building the services around next-gen SIM, all things cloud transformation, Accenture's recently launched those services offers. So I would say that the partnership really began in 2023, 2024. They were named our uh, 2024 uh, Global Emerging GSI of the Year, so congratulations oh, to Accenture you. for yeah. that, which yeah, is great. It's a, it's a lot of work that you know, we put in together with, with CrowdStrike. They're such an amazing partner in enabling, engaging, and really driving joint value with our customers. It's not about focusing on the technology as much as it is the outcomes with our clients. Yep. And being able to do that with mutual interest and looking with that focus with our clients' benefits is really something that I think has, has escalated the relationship that we've had this year. I, I always say Accenture likes to bet on sure things. So <laughs> when did you decide and how do you decide to go, because when you go in, you're all in, how and when did you decide that this was an opportunity and this was the right company to, to partner with and put those resources in as you do? So Accenture has many clients across the globe. A lot of the times when we're working in transformation projects, we were seeing CrowdStrike over and over and over again. And our clients were like, hey, this is a really great platform, we'd love to be able to work with you and engage, depending on how we can transform this into much more of a advanced from a, a detect to protect to respond kind of a capability. And it was a decision that was made by our CTO a while back and said, look, this is one of the companies that I want to put a bet on. And we need to drive and be meaningful and engaged and really make some, some progress together. You said that was your CTO. I was, I was our cyber CTO, that's okay, right. Okay, so it comes out of the technical side of the house and then of course Julie says, throws holy water on it, and then it's and go, go, go. He, 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 he's, he wears multiple hats. That's he right. also is, uh, is our cyber protect leader, um, and so he sees a lot of engagements with our clients at, on, on the front lines. Yeah. One of the things we talk about here a lot on theCUBE is the, is the skills gap, um, and the growing skills shortage, the shortage that so many companies are facing right. when they're trying to find qualified, talented individuals with the skills that they need to, to do these jobs, which makes partnerships and collaborations all the more important. Can you talk a little bit about why this, this partnership does help companies become less vulnerable to attacks because, because you are working together? I think that, again, the best practice that we've had with the Accenture partnership has really been around how are we supporting, again, the clients, their outcomes, but also to the co-delivery with delivering the CrowdStrike platform in addition to the services. 
the way that they have supported their services had made them more efficient when it comes into the resources. They have a ton of resources around the globe to support clients that can go on and off. I mean, we think about the capacity that the Accenture brings to clients in a pretty cost efficient manner, right? Yeah, Especially I like with, to believe so. Yeah, yeah with absolutely. the Falcon platform. But if you think about the skills gaps of their expertise on the CrowdStrike platform and managing CrowdStrike beyond Falcon Complete of across their entire environment, we sit down with clients and are able to fill that gap uh, for a long-term plan. Yeah, there's, think about, I, I like to think about it this way. You have a, a one-stop shop in a platform with CrowdStrike. And I li I'd like to say you have a one-stop services provider in Accenture. Bring this together and thinking about it at the depth, the breadth, and the scale that we can, where our customers need it, and driving it with accelerators in innovation with AI and other opportunities that we've done around automation really brings that, that skills gap um, not so much of a concern with our clients. Mm -hmm. So, CrowdStrike, I presume, sells to the, the CISO, sort of the, the SecOps organization. Who does Accenture engage with? Is it a board level conversation? Is it a business line conversation? And how does it ex sort of expand the roles and the personas yeah. that you guys attack? Yeah, Accenture has um, clients that are of, of varying levels. We have relationships at the board level, of course. There's VPs and C-suite and then that moves down to senior directors, directors within the organizations. It really depends on what's the transformation, what's the engagement, and how are we fitting to the purpose that, or the needs of our clients. The relationships are most likely at the top of the level within an organization that then drive um, additional outcomes that we then are able to work with partners like CrowdStrike and yeah. bring the right, uh, right technology partners into, into these engagements. So, but uh, if I understand it, go ahead, please. Yeah, what I was going to say is in addition to that, CrowdStrike, at the partnership with Accenture, it has really expanded our access across the board That's to the broader executive yeah. team, right? Our focus has been to expand outside of security because it's really a data problem, it's working with the CIO, it's working with the CFO, it's working with the executive team. Accenture brings those relationships, but again, we're one piece of the overall plan and strategy for our clients. CrowdStrike fits within that, they lead with, with CrowdStrike, but again, that's one section that Accenture's bringing to the overall relationship, and it's, it's a benefit that CrowdStrike gains yeah. by working with Accenture. I can see it, I, I can see a CEO saying, hey Accenture, I, I'm not sleeping well at night. That's I'm right. a public company, and I really want you guys to help me build out a strategy. I know we're not going to you know, solve it all at once, but it could be a multi-year type yeah. of engagement. Is that a common, it is, or it is it more it, bottoms up? Or both? No, yeah. I, I think it, both, it works both ways. What, we're, what we are seeing is when you think about traditional threat detection, incident response, that was solely squared within the CIO's organization. But what we're finding is a lot of the remediation, a lot of the, 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 the responsibilities fall within the technology teams, within the CIO's teams, within the, the CTO's teams, especially as they're looking at transformation. That then comes back to the CEO and he's like, hey, it's not just a security responsibility, it's really a technology responsibility. Right. And, and that engagement and the, and the, 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 the widening of the, of the aperture and driving that conversations is really where we benefit there. That's okay, right. yeah. so it's part of a transformation it oftentimes. Is. Yes. And then, and then folks realize you can't just bolt security on, you've got to design it in. That's right. And so it's I'd like to believe we don't want to bolt it. Like the, the sooner you can bake that into the process, right. and that's where I think a lot of the things that CrowdStrike's doing around shift left, shift right, and bringing that, that uh, transformations, mm -hmm. not just in the SOC transformation, but also on cloud, really drives the benefits there. So it, it, it doesn't become an, an afterthought. Yeah. If you don't bake it in correctly, you're always going to have these issues, and you're always going to be up at night thinking about the next problem. Right. So what, what role do each of you play in that? I'm, I'm fascinated by the sort of engagement. So you've, you've got somebody, uh, cus customers doing a transformation, they understand you can't bolt security on. Right. Um, you guys got an army of people by industry, by you know, specialty, deep technical expertise. When do you bring CrowdStrike in? Is it, is it here's the software, you, you, you go run it, um, you know what to do, or is it also, we're going to bring a particular expertise as part of that engagement. How does that all work? So let's talk about CoSell. Can we talk yeah. about CoSell? Yeah, yeah, so CoSell is an amazing thing that we have uh, from a, an actual go-to-market standpoint. The earlier that we can engage on an account with the account strategy to say, hey, yes, CrowdStrike is focused on delivering CrowdStrike outcomes and, and securing the customer, right? We're focused on our platform, but how do we work with Accenture early in the opportunity to understand the wider impact that you're probably planning and working on? Um, we, can, we have consistent enablement with our field reps when it comes to best practices of how to engage Accenture, just like we would with AWS or with Google when it comes into the co-sell motion earlier in the sales cycle. 
so that we know where we're fitting in uh, and we're building a broader account plan. Right? We talk a lot about account planning and strategy aligns to the customer's initiatives and they're a great leader when it comes to guiding that conversation because they have the intel, right? They're the ones that are drafting the plans that say, hey, this is what we're going to start with first from a priority standpoint and we work with them to build those proposals and, and to jointly present to the customer and their executive teams. The more we're able to do together yeah. and align, the better the outcomes for the client. If we're, if, we're, if we're engaged on a point situation that says, hey, here's a technology problem, I'm going to bring in this particular vendor and we're going to help solve it, that doesn't expand into a conversation that is a, a valuable outcome for the client. Mm -hmm. and, and so we always look at it with a client first centricity. Where's the needs of the client? When we are talking about the account planning, yeah. we're talking about what are the outcomes that we're getting out of here? What is that, does it make sense for us to co-sell together and co-partnership and drive those values in relation to the brand that Accenture and CrowdStrike bring together? Well, you have to agree, that's important that you do that up front because you have to agree on, okay, who's the quarterback? <laughs> who's, who's the running back? Who's going to block? Right. Who's going to go deep? Yeah. Right? Well, it's a real that, team that, is, that is exactly true. It's the alignment and it's yeah. the similar mindset and the similar strategies that you, that you share. Right. But, as, but as you pointed out too, Ninesh, it's, it's different for every client it is. as well. It is. Yes. And it's different for manufacturing and different yes. for financial services and for healthcare. Right. So if you think about the conversation and best practices, again, with Accenture, if we are able to focus on the customer and build a plan together, what we don't want to do is, is be a tra transaction. They're not a transacting partner. It's not a fulfillment vehicle, right? We, there's so much value that the customer and CrowdStrike and Accenture can gain if we start earlier in the process and have a joint mission in, in securing customers, right? Stopping the breach. Stop the breach. Stop the breach. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. which is good. So what are you finding here at Falcon 2024? What are the kinds of conversations that you're having and what are you most excited to bring back to your respective companies on, on Monday. I'll let you go first. No, I was going to tell you. <laughs> I am so curious to see the partner's perspective of it, but it is so refreshing to just see the excitement from our clients. I've met with clients over the last three days and they are eager to go back and take what they've learned, the announcements that Mike Satonis and George, uh, the partnership with Microsoft and how we're truly building a resilient future for our industry. Um, it's been very positive, right? And we're baking into planning for the future. Our customers are doubling down when it comes to the commitment with CrowdStrike and our partners uh, to build across the platform, right? Um, and so it's very exciting. You agree? I, I would, so I was just thinking about that. I, yes, I would agree. Thank but, you. Yeah, but, <laughs> What I would add you guys to are that. so aligned. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Partnership. But, but what I would add is my excitement, the, the double down that, that CrowdStrike has done with announcements and the innovation on the products, what they're doing with their market uh, and addressing how they're going to go to market, expanding the relationships with their partners, being meaningful and thoughtful on engagement with their partners in the way that makes sense not to go and gain another buck, but to drive the right outcome for the clients. Mm -hmm. Stop the breach, do it in a way that gives valuable benefits to the customers and clients, and do it in a way that is mutually winning for all of us. But now, so uh, let's talk outcomes for a moment. Yep. Are there patterns that are, you can discern and share on those outcomes? Because their, their outcome may be stop the breach, but also maybe, hey, we want to transform the organization, and so you know, stop the breach is part of that maybe. Or but educate so, the organization, or so, yeah. So yeah. is it SOC transformation, or, or is it may, maybe even more broadly? What are you seeing in terms of p outcome patterns that you can share? I want you to highlight what you guys are doing around SOC tra transformation, because I do think that that's forward leaning with what you're already delivering for customers. Yeah, absolutely. We were building and have invested in AI SOC, work, uh, SOC workflows. Um, these are augmenting the SOC uh, model thinking about false positive alerts and false um, uh, chasing leads that, that, that our incident respondents need to go after, um, threat detectors need to go after. So we're infusing a lot of automation. We're investing in AI. Take that and, and the advantages of our SOC workflows that are AI generated and Charlotte AI. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we're able to marry that together to really, really bring transformation in an automated fashion really, really helps uh, and is bringing a lot of excitement to our customers. If you go, it goes back to the scaling for customers, right? If you think about the automation that they're building, how we're transforming SIM migrations and, and the management of their SIMs via Accenture, it allows our customers to scale without adding new headcount, or we can take folks that are, that are looking at reports or building reports and move them to other top priorities within the customers, right? So there's so much value that our customers are getting based off of the joint partnership that yeah. we have. 
There's, there's a lot that we've tried to take out from a, a manual workflow, manual report generation and generate that through AI. Yeah. We've tried to scale that across the globe. So having um, SOC fusion centers that we have as far as incident responses across the globe, having uh, uh, delivery centers that are across in India, in Philippines, in, in, in various uh, parts of the world, allows us to respond 24 by 7. Allows us to look at things 24 by 7 mm -hmm. and be able to drive where our clients want us to be, to be there. Excellent. Well, a fabulous note to end on. Amanda and Nanesh, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank really you for great having conversation. Us. This was great. great. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of our live coverage of Falcon 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise technology news and analysis.